For this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Magma Chamber Simulator on your computer for the very first time. You should have received the Magma Chamber Simulator as a zip file, either downloaded from our website or if you're at one of our workshops from a jump drive. So we have it here, it's mcs.zip. To extract the MCS folder, go ahead and double click on the zip file. Now I actually have mine named as MCS Backup Folder, but yours should just be called MCS. This actually just happens to be my backup folder. The Magma Chamber Simulator is located inside of this folder, and we'll go ahead and explore it and the folder structure at the end of this video. In the meantime, the MCS folder needs to be placed in your Documents folder. For those of you who are not familiar with a Mac, you can get to your Documents folder by navigating to your Finder window. That's here in the bottom left-hand corner. We can click on it once, and then on the left-hand side we see this Documents tab. That's our Documents folder. So we can go ahead and drop the MCS folder directly in there. There's one more step and that's if we open up the MCS folder we're going to access the MCS interface. It's in this folder called MCS VBL code. We can double click on that and here's our MCS file. It's MCS 09AA. Now every version of the Magma Chamber Simulator does begin with MCS. Depending on what version you have, it might be called MCS V1, MCS 09AA, MCS 1223QP6, you know, depending on whatever version you're running. We will be coming out with more versions as time goes on. So to complete the installation, double click on your MCS file, and you do need to enable macros. Uh, the Magma Chamber Simulator is essentially a giant Excel macro. It's written in Visual Basic, and the worksheet itself is the macro, so it's not an add-in. So enable macros. And before we start, we must set the folder path for VigMax. So go ahead and click OK. And it says, oh, welcome, you're running an MCS. Here we need to type in our username, exactly as it appears. If you're not quite sure what your username is, we can go to the little search button here and type in users. Bringing up users and groups. And here we have our admin. I believe his username is J, M, and then Wayne, all in lowercase. So we can type in J, M, W, A, I, A, N. Uh, if you're not sure exactly what your username is, you can find the little house symbol on your Mac. Whatever name is ascribed to your little house symbol, that's the username that you need to type in to this user form. And click OK. And that's it. The Magma Chamber Simulator is now installed. So, uh, after you do your first run, you know, we'll, we'll do this in later tutorials where we go through how to prepare an input file for the Magma Chamber Simulator, how to actually do a run, and how to interpret output files. But for right now, you are completely set up. The last thing that you need to remember is that when you close out the Magma Chamber Simulator, you do not save it. Uh, again, it's an Excel macro. The workbook itself is the macro. Right now, if you haven't done anything except for setting the folder structure, it's okay to save it. Uh, if you click Don't Save, the folder structure will still be retained in the MCS memory, so you won't have to do it again every single time. But if you've already done a run and you accidentally save it, you won't be able to do another. Uh, this is precisely why I keep an MCS backup folder on my computer, or I make a copy of the MCS worksheet and I keep a backup copy of that in my VBL code folder. So we can go ahead and close this out. Remember, do not save it. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, kind of explore the folder structure real quick. So when you're looking at the MCS, the first thing that you'll notice is that we've got several folders and files here. This first one is input and output. This is where your input or MES files will go. And when you finished a run and exported your data, this is where your output files will be. So if we click on this here, you'll see that I have several output files here. They have different names depending on the day that I ran the run and what run of the day it was. I also have several input files here, and all of my input files begin with M-E-S and then an underscore. 
Uh, and that's something that we'll discuss in later videos, exactly how to, you know, rename these input files, how to use them, and what to put in them before doing a run. The next folder that we'll uh, go through is the MCS VBL code folder. This is the folder where the magma chamber simulator is actually located. So again, we click on that, we say our file MCS09AA. This is our magma chamber simulator folder. The next three folders that I'm going to talk about are our magma folder, our recharge folder, and our wall rock folder. So the magma chamber simulator actually consists of three separate subsystems, the magma, the wall rock, and the recharge. Uh, in addition to the output file put out by the MCS, it will also give melts output files. So if you're a melts user, you know that there's a melts.out file, and then say, you know, mineralphase.tbl, so feldspar.tbl, liquid.tbl, uh, clinopyroxene.tbl. These are the folders where those output files are found. If I click on the wallrock folder here, you'll see that I have several melts output files. These are the melts output files specifically for the wall rock subsystem. There are also a series of melts output files for the recharge. And likewise, there's a series of melts output files for the magma. So what I tend to do is I actually have a folder for each run. After every run, I clear out these folders and transfer all of the melts output files into their own folder because I personally actually like working with the melts output files. I find them very convenient. The next thing we're going to talk about are these little files called melts batch. So we have melts batch pmelts, 1.0.2, 1.1.0, and 1.2.0. We also have melts input.xsd and melts output.xsd. These are batch files for melts. This is how the magma chamber simulator actually talks with melts. You need to leave these files alone. Do not rename them do not move them. If you do, the magma chamber simulator will not work. This is part of why I actually keep the mcs.zip file handy. I just, you know, keep it somewhere that you'll remember where it is. So if you accidentally delete one of these or rename them or something happens, you have a brand new folder structure ready to go. Uh, the last bit, batch of folders that we're going to talk about are the XML in, XML out, and XML process folders. So during a run, the magma chamber simulator will talk to melts, and files, XML files will move in and out of these folders. They'll actually be stored in XML out. You can see I've got some leftovers here. As a general rule, it's really good to go ahead and we can delete these. Uh, we're done with them. There's really no reason to keep them around. There's no additional information uh, in these files that you will need after a run. Everything you need should be in either the melts output files or in the MCS output file. Occasionally during a run, if melts crashes, maybe there's a quad failure or for some reason or another something's not stable, melts might crash and you might get a stray XML file hanging out in some of these folders. As it is right now, you'll see there's only one file in each of these, meltsinput.xsd. These need to stay where they are. Again, do not rename them and do not move them. If there are any other files in these folders aside from the melts input folder, or I'm sorry, aside from the melts input files, then the magma chamber simulator will not work. So there's a clean up after melts crash button on the MCS interface that is quite useful and cleans out those stray files. However, if things are still funky, I highly recommend going in and checking these folders to make sure that meltsinput.xsd are the only files in these three folders. As far as XML out and XML processed go, those just need to be completely empty. These are where things get stored, and actually every time you do a new MCS run, the MCS will automatically clean out these files for you so they don't stick around in there. Uh, however, over time, sometimes they can accumulate. It just really makes your computer lag. I find it's a very good practice just to go ahead and empty these out. So this concludes our tutorial on how to install the Magma Chamber Simulator on your very for your very first time. Uh, for our next tutorial, we'll look at how to prepare an input file for a fractional crystallization only run.